Hello everyone, and welcome or welcome back. In this tutorial, we will talk about different kinds of conditions, loofs, and cloning in Scratch. Also, we will show you how these different features can help you build interesting projects. So, without wasting our precious time, let's get started. Conditional blocks Have you ever asked a friend or someone else for something, and they said, okay, I will, but, on one condition? In order to get what you want, you have to do what they ask is a condition. One time they might have wanted you to bring them tea to give you football. When you're building your game, you will often find that you have a group of blocks that you want to use, but only on one condition. For example, you might want to run a block only if the player pressed a certain key. That's an excellent time to use a special set of blocks called conditional blocks. They work only when the condition happens. If else block. Let's check out the if else block. It assists to make a decision about what your sprite is going to do based on a condition. If the condition is true, it will carry out the instructions given in the first part. If the condition is false, it will carry out the instructions given in the second part. Let's imagine that you want to have a sprite switching between two specific costumes. To carry out this instruction, the normal sentence might be. If the sprite is in the first costume, then switch to the second costume, or, if not, switch back to the first costume. You can do the exact same work using the if, else block. The condition for this is if the sprite is displaying the first costume, so you can use an underscore equals underscore operators block to check if the costume number equals 1. If it is equal to 1, then you would want it to switch costumes to costume number 2, so add a switch costume to underscore block in the first part. If it doesn't have the desired costume on, you want it to switch back to the other costume using switch costume to underscore block into the bottom section and choose the first costume from the drop-down menu. Scratch will ask if the present costume is the number one costume. If it is the number one costume, then the code tells the sprite to switch to number two or else it will switch to the number one costume. If then block. The conditional block isn't just about the if, else block. The best and the simplest one and one you'll use often is the if, then block. You may have noticed that this block looks a lot like the top part of the if, else block, and guess what? It works the same way as the if, else block. With a slight difference, which is that this block doesn't care what happens if the condition you provided is no or false. It will advance on to the successive blocks. Example in real life for the if, then block would be, imagine your friends want you to come outside and play with them. So you ask your mom or dad if you can play outside, and they say, yes, you can go and play with your friends, if your room is clean. So the condition is simple, you clean your room and go out. If not, nothing happens. If you don't want anything to happen when your condition is false, this block can save you. Wait block. You might have understood of the purpose of the wait until underscore block just by reading it. It waits until a condition is satisfied or true, and then it proceeds to the other blocks after it. Wait until underscore block stops Scratch from doing anything, rather than waiting until the condition you provided becomes true. Loops If you do something over and over again, you will probably get tired and feel bored. But it is not the case for Scratch. Scratch can do anything, over and over, and, over, or maybe forever. It might get really difficult to write the same code again and again if there were no loop blocks, like changing the costume of the sprite again and again. Let's understand this with a code example. Sometimes you may want to repeat specific actions again and again. You can use the forever block for such a purpose. This forever block makes Scratch repeat the blocks forever that are inside the block. So if you want to keep doing some specific actions from start to the end, then what you exactly need is the forever block. You may have noticed that you cannot connect any other blocks after a forever block. It is because this block continues always and never ends. Loops inside of loops. You can also put a loop block inside of another loop block, and it is known as nested loops. Creating nested loops is a very common thing to do. For instance, there are two repeat blocks inside of a forever block. It has a sprite point to the left 
and then moves eight steps and repeats that four times. Then it makes the sprite point to the right and then move eight steps and repeat that four times. So the sprite would be in motion, going back and forth and going left and right. And as we have used the forever loop, it would keep doing that until you hit the red stop button. A loop and a conditional block. The repeat until underscore block is a block that is both a conditional and a loop. And by using it, you can do something over and over until a certain condition is met. In the following example, we will use a block you haven't learned about yet, loudness block. This block continually check the volume from the microphone. If it is over 10, and then the sprite will say, very loud voice. Otherwise, it says I cannot hear anything. Stopping blocks. Sometimes you might want to stop a set of blocks from further doing anything. For that, you can use the stop block. This block is a type of control block and stops any more block from happening. You can use the stop all block, the stop all the code or blocks. Stop all block stops every single script, while stop this script block stops just the attached script. The third stopping block is the opposite of stop this script, namely stop other scripts in sprite block. It stops all of the scripts that aren't attached to it. This can be helpful when you want to continue the main part of your code, but you want to stop all other blocks from working. Cloning. If you need a sprite that is close to another sprite in your project, you can create clone for that sprite. In Scratch, clones can be super helpful and can make things easier. It might be hard to understand the clone and cloning process, but it will make your code effortless when you understand it. Don't be afraid to create clones in Scratch because they fix your problems in fewer blocks than you'd normally need. For playing with clones, there are three main blocks when I start as a clone block. Create clone of underscore and delete this clone block. To create clones of the current sprite, use the create clone of myself block. This makes a copy of everything about the current sprite. Clone hat block. So when I start as a clone hat block, lets your clone capable of doing its own scratch blocks, giving a new script to the new clone sprite. Let's learn how to use it. First we will hide the sprite, in this case the ladybug 2. We will set the size to 100%. Then, we will set the location X and Y. We will use the repeat block, 4 times. Inside the repeat block, we will create a clone for the sprite, moving the sprite 100 steps towards the right side of the stage. We will change the color effect, size, and the ghost effect of the sprite. When the clone is created, the scratch will run the when I start as a clone script. First, it will show the sprite, Ladybug 2 in this case. We will run the code forever, using the forever block, and inside the forever block, we will use the wait underscore seconds block to wait for 2 seconds. Then, we will change its costume. Now run this and see the result. Well, that's all we have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.